I often wonder what makes the difference between success and failure, resilience and giving up, consistency and procrastination, and although there are probably no simple answers, there is a framework that I've recently adapted that has genuinely changed things a lot for me and that I would absolutely love to share. Hiya! If you're new here, my name's Elizabeth. I'm a medical student and an artist living in London. I am very, very curious about the way that my mind works using a framework from Naval Ravikant. I feel as though I have genuinely changed the way that I approach work and play. The sentence that he said was that the opposite of play isn't work, it's depression. And this hit me hard. I've always seen things as being either work or play, and this is probably because that's how they were presented to me when I was younger. I was told, for example, you can only leave the table and go back to play once you've finished your food, or I was told that I would be only able to watch TV or rest once I'd finished my homework. Things were always presented to me in a way that I could either rest and have fun or do work and things that I had to do. And I feel as though I internalize this into thinking that I'm either working and being miserable or I'm being happy and resting and doing whatever I want. But work and fun do not sit on opposite sides of the spectrum. Actually, the opposite of fun would be misery or as Naval said, depression. And work will sit somewhere in between, depending on the task. A task that I hate to do would be more on the misery side, and a task that I love to do would be more on the fun side. When I find myself in a state of flow and I'm working for 20 hours, completely content and inspired, it's not because I've become a different person and I hate to play, it's because to me, I am playing. That has become my goal in life, to find those things that look like work, pay like work, qualify as work, but to me, fully feel like play. So for example, being in the hospital, talking to patients, studying, reading, making notes, shooting these YouTube videos, all of these things to me fully qualify as play. If I was younger, this would be in the category of things that I would choose to do in my resting time, not in my work time. Fortunately, these are the type of things that to other people might look like work. I feel as though this is honestly so life-changing and it's kind of been a principle of mine to look out for those things that other people say, oh my gosh, how are you doing that? That is so difficult. But to me, feels incredibly easy. If I were to be doing things that I don't like doing, as I have done in the past, I am honestly just as lazy, likely to procrastinate, if not more, than the average person. It's just because luckily I have had the privilege to design my life in such a way that I get to do things that I enjoy, that I can do them all day, every day. I think this mind shift change is so amazing. It is very difficult to compete with someone that is having fun because as Naval also said, you can try to do what they are doing, but it is unlikely that you will be able to keep it up for 16 hours a day, seven days a week, as they are able to do, because to them, they are playing, and to you, you will be working. So yes, I don't know if to everyone else this was completely obvious from the start, because genuinely, it was so life-changing for me, so that might just be myself. So yes, seeing things in this way, trying to identify in myself what are the things that people are willing to pay for that I could do for 20 hours the day easily and once I find those things like art and YouTube and medicine I lean into those things and invest all of my time there and that is how both I am happy and my results are hopefully good. So yes I do genuinely hope that this helped anyone at all and as always if you made it so far thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, be kind to yourself and others and don't believe everything you think. Thanks, bye!